garden update for July 29, 2011. I'm getting very impatient with these horned melons. They're teasing me. There are so many on this vine, but none of them are ripe yet. Here's the first one again. It is kind of yellow. And there's a lot. There's a green one in there. There's like two green ones in there. Two more green ones right there. Henrietta right there. <laughs> new one growing. Let's see. Uh, on the other side, there's one in the fence. There's a bunch. Yeah, there's some in the buckets. They're all starting to turn a little bit yellow, but they're not ripe yet. And I'm getting really impatient because I want to eat one. I wonder what they taste like. I bet they taste really good. Alright, let's go into the back. Hey girls. Okay, gourd time. Gourds are doing pretty well. I actually had my first harvest and I'm going to show that in just a little bit. But all these ones that are just escaped onto the ground, I fertilized three of them and they're actually, I forgot about them and they're doing really well. And I love finding surprises in the leaves. I found this one. Isn't that a cute shape? I love that. I can tell that these are hybrids, which means that the seeds uh, from the last plant were a mix of different breeds. Like, there's one in here, for instance. There it is. I can tell this is probably a cross between a birdhouse and a swan gourd, because it's got the, the swan gourd shape and the skinny neck and the, the swan or goose shape, but... It's got the colors of the bottle gourd. It doesn't have the uh, speckling that the swan gourd has. And then this thing is definitely a mix. Where did you go? This one's the biggest one so far of the, the ground ones. I pollinated this one, so it's really cool that it's it's so big. And it's hard to get a good shot with all the shadows. But I think it's going to keep growing and getting bigger, and that's so nice. And it looks like it's got a mix of swan gourd and, uh, I don't know, something else. But this looks like a typical Thanksgiving type of gourd that you see in the cornucopia. This one didn't make it. That sucks. So I, was, I was like, of course, everybody likes to get as many as possible. Now in the arbor, there have been some big surprises. Okay, here's that, that big one again. And, uh, this is best to go inside. Want oh, real quick, tomatoes doing great. I've got them, I put this little netting on them to keep the bugs out. Have to, it's a lot of work, it's really hard to, to net all of them, actually. Brandywines! I was disappointed, actually. We finally harvested the first one, and Chris loved it. And to me, it tasted just like every other tomato. And I've been wanting, and I've always read that Brandywine is the best, best tomato that you can grow, heirloom special, and I don't know, I just don't have discriminating taste. It just tasted like every other tomato I've grown. I was very disappointed. I guess I was expecting something spectacular. But we'll see. All right, inside the gourd arbor. Whoa. Again, I gotta make sure I don't step on all the vines that I'm walking through. It's kind of hard to get in here. Oh, these are ready for harvest. Um, I know that they say on a lot of sites that you're supposed to wait until the vine dies. But, uh, you can see the stem here has turned brown. So this gourd isn't getting any more nourishment. And it's ready to be picked. It's the same thing as if you wait for the whole vine to die. This one still has a little bit of green on it. So I'm not gonna pick that one. I'll let it let it be. A little tiny gourd. And there's the other tiny tiny gourd. It's still very green, it's not ready. And the opos, they're still getting stuff from the parent vine. A lot of these vines are on the way out as you see all these dead leaves, but this Actually, there were two huge surprises in here. I can't believe I didn't see them. I was getting ready to yank out 
the Zooka Gourd from this pot because uh, all my other Zookas had died. And then this one just appeared out of nowhere. I didn't pollinate this one. This one just popped out. <laughs> I'm so glad because it is the first one that is actually the Zooka shape. And I hope it'll get really big. I hope it'll get bigger than this and it'll make it and hopefully no no blossom end rot. I don't know. I don't feel anything down there. I hope that doesn't rot. I'll be happy if it stays this size even. Be nice to get it bigger and get it full size. But oh, I'm so glad. Please, please make it. And then this was a surprise too. Because this also got pollinated all by itself. And this is a uh, Indonesian bottle gourd. Unfortunately, it's a little deformed. It's supposed to be perfectly round on the bottom and on the top and up here. Get off, you evil bugs. I hate those things. It's supposed to be perfectly round, so unlike the, the swan gourd that has the swan, the bird head shape. But still, I'm just happy. My first Indonesian bottle. I'm probably not keeping any of these seeds as they've all been hybridized and... Alrighty, and that's about it for the garden update this time. And this is the first harvest for this year, and I'm really happy. My first gourds. This one is a pointed cannonball gourd. I love this. That is cool. If this one dries out right and makes it, even though they've been harvested, they're still not out of the woods. Okay, sorry about that. The memory card ran out. Um, even though they've been harvested, they're not out of the woods yet. What happens is uh, they they can get soft and go bad. Uh, when I put these out to dry, I'll put them on top of a wire shelf so they can get air all around them. And they're going to get moldy and gross and ugly. And that's normal. That's actually part of it. But they dry out and they turn into hard wood and then you wash off the mold and you can, if you make them in the birdhouses, you can drill a hole in them and get all the seeds out and hang them up for the birds. But the problem is that while they're drying and molding up, they can go bad sometimes. And I've lost, I lost a really nice one last year, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, so that's a cannonball gourd. If this one makes it, I want to paint it black. So it'll be like a real cannonball. That'll be neat. This is a, a normal, I guess it's a bottle gourd. Uh, I think a Chinese bottle. And what I might do, the traditional bottle gourd, is just, once it dries, cut the top off, clean that really good, and put a cork in it, and it can be a, a water bottle, canteen. And this is the, uh, the swan gourd. But because it was hanging on the trellis, the neck straightened out. It didn't bend over like the little one outside and turn into a, a swan shape. You can see here it's already starting to uh, dry out and it'll mold up. So, actually, I hope all of these make it. And love the colors. It's so fun. All right. First harvest of the year for the gourds and garden update for this time. Bye-bye.